I was good. I was up. Okay, your girl just get a little love, little love. What's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you are returning to my channel, go ahead. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Okay, so tonight I'm going to give you guys some tips for first time home buyers. I'm going to give you guys some tips that your girl wish she would have known before she started buying her house. When I tell y'all the house buying process is so stressful, I I don't know how stressful it is for buying a pre-existing home, but I can tell you how stressful it was for me by um building my house. But I'm going to just give you guys the whole little rundown. I'm going to tell you guys because I started this process well over, I'm going to say, six years ago. And I'm going to tell you why it took me six years so y'all don't have to take six years to do it. So the first thing I did when I decided I wanted to buy a house was I thought I had to run and fix my credit. So that's the first thing I did. I fixed my credit. I got my credit. My credit went from like a high three something to a high seven something now. And I also thought I would have to put 20% down to um, get a new house. And then at the time that I was thinking about buying and purchasing a house, I was thinking about purchasing a pre-existing home. I didn't think I was going to build my home that I'm building. I'm so thankful to be, ha to be able to have built the house that I have built. I'm so very, very blessed. And I don't want to sound ungrateful or anything this is not my dream home but this is the home that i will i have dreamed of building for my first home from the situation i'm in i okay i started this process as a single mother and as a single mother you just want to do better than what you had when you were uh, for me i wanted to do better for my my son uh, I wanted to build a better environment for my son so I had to boss up and do some things and tonight I don't know why I can't talk but I'm gonna get into this video real quick so you one thing I can tell you guys that if your credit score is around 540 you end up you are good I think you only need a 540 if I'm not mistaken what it's different with each loan First song I'm going to tell you guys about is FHA. I'm going to be reading for my little phone because I got to take my little notes. Okay, so FHA is a loan. And the FHA loan is the most popular government bat home loan in the country. These low down payment loans are made by qualified lenders and guaranteed by Federal Housing Administration. FHA loans require just 3.5% down. So you don't have to put that big chunk down, that big 20% down on a lot of people. Um, like a lot of traditional loans require you to with FHA, you only got to put the 3.5 percent. Okay, it's so a for borrowers with the 580 credit score. So you got to have a 580 credit score. My bad, I, I thought it was 540, but it's 580 credit score or higher for home buyers with less than perfect credit. FHA loans offer additional significant benefits. The government backing means that means average FHA interest rates are typically lower than the average rates for conventional mortgages. It said borrowers with the credit score as low as 500 can qualify for a FHA loan with a 10% down payment. So if you got 500 credit, a 500 credit score and you got at least 10% down, you can still qualify for this loan. And the next loan that I want to talk about is USDA loan. With the USDA loan, I know with that one, you do not have to put down any money. But let me tell you, see what the requirements are for FH, the USDA loan. The USDA um, requirements are, let me tell y'all, are real strict. I, I wasn't approved for a USDA loan. I wish I was. There's, a, there's two types of the USDA loans. One is the USDA Direct and the other one is USDA Guaranteed Loan. The USDA Direct is exactly what the, what the name says it is. Borrowers work directly with their local USDA office to facilitate the loan. 
The more common USDA loan is USDA guaranteed loan. The USDA guaranteed loan is where borrowers obtain a home loan for a private lender or bank and the loan is backed or guaranteed by the USDA. Hey, Lo. Hey, Mommy. How was your day at school? Good. Mommy, can I, go, can I play with the game outside? Yeah. Alright. Where your brother? Outside with Michael. Okay. Sorry, y'all. The kids just got home. Okay, so... The USDA loan is the least common of the main four types of home loan. There's FHA, VA, conventional, and USDA. So the VA is for veteran, is veteran affairs. You have to be a veteran to be approved for that one. Conventional is just the traditional loans. And then we talked about FHA already. So it says, it says USDA home loan is designed for borrowers of low to moderate income and more rural. Yeah, don't talk about how I talk. Cause I cannot say, I cannot pronounce, I cannot enunciate some words, so don't don't come for me. Areas. So the majority of the United States actually qualifies for this loan. That's cap. I'm telling y'all that's cap. Cause I did not qualify for the loan. I think that loan is they got us. It's the the guidelines are real strict. I can tell you that. I can tell you that. It says the USDA loan is 100% no money down loan. This is quite probably the biggest driver of this recent popularity. It's a 30 year fixed loan. And it says the That's just about it with a USDA loan. Okay, so the final loan that I want to talk about is NACA. NACA is N-A-C-A. And NACA is not only good for first-time home buyers, but it's also good for people that are in foreclosure. They help save your home so you keep your home. NACA is not good for people that are just... If, I mean, if you're trying to build your home, I would not recommend using NACA because... Well, I'm not going to say I wouldn't recommend using that, but it's going to be hard for you to build your home because you have to find somebody that's willing to build your home pro bono. And then once it's completed and it's a living dwelling there, then NACA will pay them their money. So you got to find somebody that's willing to front the cost of building your home. And I'm going to tell you, it's not a lot of people that's willing to put themselves up for that. But NACA focuses on low, low to moderate income home buyers called priority members and low to moderate income areas, priority areas. Thus, everyone is eligible adhering to the following. Set priority members, home buyers whose income is less than 100% of the median income for metropolitan statistical area. Priority members can purchase their home anywhere. Non-priority members Home buyers with income equal to or greater than the medium income for an MSA must purchase the U.S. must purchase in a U.S. Census tract where the median income is less than 100% of the medium income for that MSA. It says no member of the household can have ownership, interest, or any other property at the time of closing. Occupy the home over the life of the NACA mortgage. Participate in five actions and activities a year in at least one priority prior in at least one prior to NACA qualification, one prior to closing and achieving NACA's overall mission of economic justice. Be willing to abide by NACA terms of membership participation eligibility. That's my kidney. Yeah, I know that. So, yeah. if I can a NAC, if you wonder, okay, if you can a NAC member purchase other properties after the closing of a NAC home. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is just make sure that you do your research. Make sure that you are offered everything that you are entitled to before just going with what someone tells you that you're eligible for. Me personally, I went, I exhausted all of my um options first and i ended up with the fha loan because like i said i couldn't get the usda loan if i want if i could have gotten the usda loan 
and say that little 3.5 percent that i put down baby your girl would have had them through that 3.5 percent in her pocket but i can't say that it wasn't i didn't put down a lot it wasn't bad considering how much that my house um cost i think my house is 237 thousand dollars and some change and we put down i think 3500 so it wasn't that bad was it did it break my pockets no did it it didn't hurt me and that's what i like about those notes but uh i really wish i could have used naca because if i use naca when i saw you baby that little 3.5 percent that i would put down i would have bought down my interest rate and my mortgage still would have been cheaper than what it is now because you you could buy down your um, mortgage and you could buy down your interest rate to where with naca when i went through the program with naca my mortgage was going to be like seven hundred dollars my interest rate was gonna be zero point one percent but it just was hard for me to find a builder that would actually build my house and get paid at the end of the job so since i couldn't find someone to do that for me i had to you know go a different route so if you guys are looking to buy and looking into buying a pre-existing home naca is the way to go naca is n-a-c-a -A. a lot of um people don't know about that program but when i tell y'all that that program is amazing that program is amazing you have to do a lot for them to um approve you but just do it hard work and dedication to where you ain't got to put nothing down you and then if you do it want to put something down there so you could like i said you could buy down your mortgage you buy down your interest rate to where that you're making payments that are comfortable for you and that's what i was going to do if i could have found somebody to actually build my house and then they got paid at the end of the project but like i said that's hard to find hopefully these tips were good to you guys with the home loans and if you have any other questions, if you want to know any other questions, drop a comment below and go ahead and subscribe, hit that notification bell. And until next time, stay beautiful.